French and Friends here, 1590 WCGO. It's time to go up the street to Evanston Rebuilding Warehouse. Carla Bruni joins us. What's going on, Carla? Well, you know, just fighting the good fight. <laughs> uh, why don't you tell us what the good fight is? Because it really is a good fight, and it's something that I absolutely adore what you guys do. So tell us. Yeah, sure. Um, so we're a nonprofit, but we're kind of run like two nonprofits. On the one hand, we have a 14,000-square-foot warehouse uh -huh. where – we save tens of thousands of tons of uh, demolition and deconstruction materials each year. And we sell that at an affordable price so that people who, you know, everybody basically has a right to uh, have a nice home. So we sell it at a good rate to people and try and keep it local. And then the other part of that is we actually run a workforce training program. Right. So people who are facing multiple barriers to employment, um, can come to us and interview, and if we have a position, um, we'll train them in deconstruction and construction trades, and uh, hopefully create a path for them to uh, have some, you know, decent paying and permanent employment. And then you said that was that was tons. Is yes? Is, would that go into a landfill if yes. you guys didn't pick that up? Yes. <laughs> okay. So in Those are our uh, mountains, the Illinois mountains. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, we currently have to truck everything 100 miles away, also yeah. for our landfills, which are rapidly filling. Um, about in Illinois, I think it's about 30 percent of our landfill debris is construction and demolition debris. So it's uh, kind of the elephant in the room that we really need to take a little more seriously. So we're working hard on that. Um, also trying to see if we can work on you know tightening up ordinances and getting them to take this problem a little more seriously. Uh, why, when when construction or deconstruction happens, when people go in and, and demolish, uh, why don't they salvage more? Is it just time? They don't know what they're looking at? Because I see so many, I don't know, see it that many, not as many as you do, but it seems like there's a lot of good stuff that people aren't reusing, and it doesn't make any fiscal sense to me either. It's really great stuff, a lot of it, especially uh, there's a lot of older homes in the area. The forests we were cutting down back then were amazing. The yeah. grain was so tight. Everything was incredible. And not to mention the craftsmanship that came after that point. So um, I think a lot of people, I think for one, contractors aren't as familiar with uh, how to use older materials sometimes now, or they don't um, sort of understand, or architects uh, or developers, sort of the tax benefits uh -huh. of deconstructing your home. Uh, because we have a workforce training program, uh, we can get even better tax benefits for people uh, if they want. They can essentially donate their entire house to us. And then we have to catalog and inventory out everything that uh, is resaleable from that point. But um, there's, you know, there's a lot of different things people just don't really understand in terms of how it can be economic, economically beneficial. It takes a little bit longer. That's one thing. So I would if imagine you need it instead down, of just going like, in and crushing everything, exactly. you have to, have to take like, it apart diligently. Right. It's not a, one you know, person behind a bulldozer just smashing this thing down. We have to disassemble everything by hand. So it does take longer, but, you know couple of weeks or something in the grand scheme of things usually while you have to wait so long to get your building permits etc yeah. anyways we think not that big of a deal and, and then so. you might have thousands of dollars worth of quality materials on your hands too so it seems like it'd be a net win uh for yeah. people well the, the tax write-off alone is um usually offsets those those costs so um and then some oftentimes carla bruni joins us one second dennis evanston rebuilding warehouse evanston rebuilding warehouse.org you should stop in if you've got a project going on uh, or just maybe you want to dream about a future project, 2101 Dempster is where you need to stop. Dennis. So now this isn't just uh, like light sockets or anything along <laughs> no way, those man. lines or, or, or cabinetry or anything like that. What kind of materials can we actually donate? Because I'm sure we can't just uh, rip the rock wool or the fiberglass uh, right out and then uh, repurpose that. Right. Yeah, we um, we really focus on building materials more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, we do have some some unusual uh, fun items that we'll get in. Uh, but typically we'll have, you know, because most of the stuff comes to us locally, uh, you know, the building booms were 1880s, 1890s and the 1910s and 1920s. So that's what a lot of our stock is. Um, so we'll have, you know, you know, doors up the wazoo. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, like it's all like heavy wood, you know, no hollow core stuff. We make signs out of hollow core doors when people try and them. <laughs> the chop them up. Um, and, uh, you know, gosh, what do we have? We have tons of antique lighting that's extraordinary. I never knew how much I actually wanted a chandelier. I never knew I wanted uh -huh. a chandelier until I worked there. And we see so many of those come in. Um, just, uh, gosh, what do we have? Tile. We have. Yeah. 
reclaimed wood flooring. We have. Um, I love the look of those. The you know the knotty pine or the wide plank. Uh, mm-hmm. I would definitely yeah. want that uh, in my house instead of. I mean, it looks good here, but maybe we should have gone to Evanston Roof Building Warehouse because <laughs> we just redid our studio. I hope you like what we've done with yeah, the place. Yeah, it looks great. Carla Bruni is here. Um, am I going to find? Gosh, I hope the answer is yeah. Am I going to find like sinks or bathrooms yes, or stuff yes, like that? Yes, that's another huge part of it. We have a lot of bathrooms. So. so, yeah, we do get some clawfoots and pedestal. Um, yeah. And we get brand new stuff, too. So we have stuff that goes back to probably middle middle of the 19th century up through brand new, still in the box. Cool. Um, Kohler. Um, you know, we get like, you know, Viking stoves and all of this commercial. <laughs> the thing is, like. It's funny because people will sometimes ask us about other, uh, you know, ask if we're affiliated with other uh, warehouses. And we're like, no, we are, are we are lone wolf, but we are like totally not competitive uh, mm-hmm. because we need we need more space. We could fill two more warehouses our size, literally with with what we have. Um, so, you know, we sort of uh, focus on what we focus on. But, um, yeah, there's just so much material out there and it's so good. We get everything from the North Shore, essentially, and we need help. Now, so, yeah. Is it a testament to the craftsmanship that you have some of these older materials that of of what it was made out of and uh, kind of the designs that somebody didn't want to actually just rip, rip it, it up and tear it into mulch? They actually wanted to keep it and, and make it alive. Um, yeah, we certainly hope so. I mean, I think a lot of people do feel kind of guilty, <laughs> you know, which we which we rely on. Yeah. My background is historic preservation, so I love to make them feel guilty, um, <laughs> knowing what went into all this stuff. But uh, but yeah, I think people are just kind of like, eh, we need to expand, we need to reconfigure this, we need to do whatever. But uh, we know this is great stuff. It's just not our our style, or or you know, we we just have to open up some space. So. Um, so yeah, I think, I think, you know, not everybody, I wish more people felt that way, but I think it definitely is why some people do that and why some people come to us, you know, we have contractors who constantly come over and over and over to us and designers and, you know, cause they know we've got the good stuff. Do you, well, that you, let's talk about the good stuff. Do you think the trend is toward preservation? Because I want something with character. I know more and more people want things with character. Yes. Uh, maybe that maybe it's going to cost a little more, but it's going to last longer. It's going to look so much cooler. And when you're buying a home, I mean, this is when you do spend everything you can. Mm-hmm. You see a yeah. trend uh, uh, toward that? I mean, I feel like the trend kind of goes up and down, but yeah. I think that um, it, it tends to sort of depend on real estate costs and pricing and whatnot, um, oftentimes. But part that like we keep things affordable. I think that part of the problem in the past has been. You have these, you know, you do have some warehouses that are usually for profit and extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. So then it's kind of like, well, preservation is just for people that have a lot of money, um, (laughs) which is total nonsense. And um, as someone who, you know, studied it and has done a ton of work in it for over a decade now, like I found that sort of offensive and irritating. (laughs) So (laughs) I was drawn particularly to the Evanston Rebuilding Warehouse because Lou was really our executive director. Uh, She was really intent on keeping things affordable. Um, so, you know, and the more stock we have and we need to move our stock because, again, we don't have a lot of space, um, you know, the more that drives costs down for everybody. So the more people who are donating and deconstructing and doing stuff, the better. That's good news. Carla Bruni joins us. Evanston Rebuilding Warehouse, 2101 Dempster, evanstonrebuildingwarehouse.org. Now, if I have a uh, deconstruction project, how do I get a hold of you? And what's the process of uh, making sure that this is stuff that you actually want? So mm-hmm. I'm not going out there with a claw hammer and just smashing the <laughs> smashing the crap out of things. Yeah, there's um, there's what you would do is basically call the warehouse and you would talk to uh, Lou Dixon. Mm-hmm. And she's been helping people through hey, this Lou. process and <laughs> and. Um, really educating, you know, more and more, you know, architecture firms and and contractors and and developers on, you know, what are the advantages? What are the steps we need to take? Uh, You have an independent appraiser. It's very important to come in and actually go through and put a value on, you know, on all of the the elements that are able to be salvaged Mm -hmm. um, and resold. So, uh, you know, there's, you know, there's certain permits you need and certain things, but that's what we help with. So we help you navigate that. So now I'm on the other side and I want to build something now. Yes, sir. What is what are the steps that I that I want to build uh, or, or go through so that I can actually uh, build the, the the great eclectic kind of uh, sound that it, <laughs> yeah, dude, I want it to be me like over here. <laughs> well, then you need a really good GC, okay, <laughs> um, yeah, an architect. But um, yeah, I mean, in terms of you know a lot of the stuff, uh, you know, sometimes people repurpose stuff. It's great when they can reuse it for its mm-hmm. original intended purpose. Um, 
you know, a lot of it is 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 stuff people are doing on interior stuff. Mm -hmm. In terms of building, you know, from foundation on up with only reclaimed materials, it depends, you know, really city by city what you're allowed to do and not allowed to do. So that's a that's a larger answer that <laughs> I'm not quite qualified for. You mentioned some help that you guys need. Uh, what yes. kind of help? What are we talking and how can people help? Yeah. So more than anything, I mean, we're, we're, you know, we are very fortunate that we have incredible materials that we get, you know, from again, all through the North Shore for our warehouse. We, uh, we do, you know, we're able to pay all of our bills and our salaries that way. But our workforce training, which is that second component, is what really we need to fundraise for. It's extremely expensive. It's, it's kind of like the heart of the organization. Mm -hmm. We believe very, very strongly in it. Um, unemployment rates in Evanston for, um, I think it's African-American men ages 18 to 25 is like 50% unemployment oh, rate. Yeah. It's, it's astonishing. So I had no idea, honestly, until uh, until I started working here. So we're really just trying to like, you know, find ways, <laughs> you know, find ways to <laughs> remedy that as much as we are able to. Uh, but it's expensive. So uh, basically to pay for our trainees, we have trainee stipends uh, because they should be paid because they work hard. We have to pay for personal protection equipment for them, tools, rent, workers' comp, um, liability insurance, transportation sure. costs, you know, supplemental food, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, so it, it adds up pretty quickly. So we just calculated these. So that's why I have to look at my totals that's right cool. now. <laughs> right now. Um, but it's on average, it's about $25,000 a month total to run oh, wow. our workforce training program, which is a huge number. Yeah. So. You know, we fundraise and we do everything that we can. We have an annual fundraiser that you guys were really, really generous about uh, promoting for us last year in, in October. So thank you for that. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we've got uh, it's a thousand. It's over a thousand dollars per trainee per week to go through this for us to pay for a trainee to go through this program. About one hundred fifty dollars worth of food a week. So mm -hmm. any kind of, <laughs> you, know, yeah. <laughs> we, you know, we're lucky. We have a lot of uh, material supplies and stuff coming yeah. into us. But honestly, where we need help most is is just uh, to keep keep getting funding in regularly so that we can keep our program going and growing. It's really simple for folks to do. You just one of the best ways and the most fun is just to go and shop. Oh yeah, uh, you yeah, know, just come go check, check out the warehouse. <laughs> Maybe it's a project. Apartment. Yeah, <laughs> what's, what's that look like? Just oh flooded God, with it stuff. Is, it is hilarious. Yes, <laughs> it is ridiculous. Uh, and you can do that at twenty one oh one Dempster. It's really unique. The cool things you're going to find in there that are going to make your home just you know really pop. It's going to give it that character that you want. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, your husband or wife wants. What do you have, Dennis? And then you guys are always looking for volunteers as well uh, at the warehouse. Mm -hmm. uh, where can I go to uh, to volunteer other than just showing up? Is it yeah, how, how does uh, probably get to call first. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, we, we always need uh, we always need help. We get so much material, and like I said, so mm -hmm. organizing it is you know is a big part of that. Um, sometimes people do help us with things like fundraising and and whatever. So it's kind of it kind of changes, but uh, we do have a volunteer coordinator that can kind of help navigate that, and uh, they tend to have a lot of fun too. We even okay. do gardening and different things like that. So um, plenty to do for sure. <laughs> Carla yeah, so. Bruni has been our guest. Evanston Rebuilding Warehouse, EvanstonRebuildingWarehouse dot org twenty one zero one Dempster. As we've said, I encourage you to stop by, go to the website, too. Uh, many ways to help to get involved and make your dream project come true. Carla, I appreciate it. Wish you all the continued success. It's Thank you. Super we appreciate awesome you guys. Come by and get a big hunk of terracotta or something. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> right. We'll do. Fun. Right. French and Friends, more coming up.